One of the reasons that there is this very real popular interest these days in the founders, and not just the Tea Party angle on it, which is somewhat mis misguided, I That's feel. That's political. Yeah. But the, you know, the fact that these people are buying books about Jefferson and Washington and, you know, and McCulloch's miniseries and that kind of thing, we see in them the sort of gold standard for the currently debased political currency of our time. Yep. Yep. And what's really different is they were in interested in serving in the interest of the public, which is not the same thing as the interest of the people. Right. The interest of the people is a more fleeting and temporary thing, now driven by money. Right. Um, the public is the long-term interest of the people, which at any given time, the majority of the people might not understand. Right. Right. Do the right thing for the long-term interest of the people, regardless of its political consequences. Right. And that's what is so attractive to people now, because they know nobody does that now. You know, and I, I think you and I both realize that's very elitist, and if so, so be it. That's right. It's pre-democratic. Yeah. And, so uh, and well, that's, that's the reason it worked. Yeah. Um, and elitist is not a bad word. No. It's like, you know, like, actually, when it was a bad word then was democracy. Right. Democracy right. was an epithet. Right. Democracy meant mob rule. Right. Democracy meant conceding the issue to people who don't understand it. Right. Um, right. And so, and, and what, this is a natural aristocracy that we create then. It's a, what we would call a meritocracy. Right. Um, none of them would have made it into the British aristocracy. Right. Um, Ham I mean, Ad Hamilton was a bastard, literally. Um, uh, Jefferson, you know, would have been a minor country, a country farmer. Um, Washington would have made major. Yeah, Washington was, uh, as I remember from your books, very angry that he could not. Yeah, they, he, they wouldn't accept his ap yeah. appeal for a for a uh, commission in the British Army. Yeah, right. And uh, boy, do they regret that. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard the bullets whizzing around me, and believe me, there is something charming, charming in, in the south. south. That's that's exactly right. It's after <laughs> the battle on the Monongahela, where he yeah. survives, I mean, uh, miraculously. Yeah. But um, but my point earlier is that simply that I think that generation embodies a form of political uh, behavior that is, it's like a lost generation. You're never going to see it again. Right. Uh, right. And yet, its very existence is is alluring, because right. once upon a time. There was a possible kind of political right. leadership that right. functioned in this fashion. Right. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.